part of my frustration as I was observing the market was the women that were of retirement age and cobbling together jobs because they didn't have enough money to pay their bills and they were aging alone. So why is that happening? Well, I thought now is the time that women need to come to the table and understand the impacts of decisions made today that will impact their future aging alone. And that's why it's so important now to have that conversation with the couple. So while she might say, well, he makes the money decisions or I don't want to make the decision, it's important to have that conversation that really these decisions are really about you. Welcome to the Midland Money Mindset Show. This is a podcast about the financial, money, and recreational mindset needed to successfully plan for and live your best life before and through retirement. Let's dive into today's show. I'm Larry Sprung, your host for the Midland Money Mindset Show and founder and wealth advisor of Midland Financial. Today's guest is Dr. Barbara Provost, the founder of Purse Strings LLC. Barbara is no stranger to hard work and challenges and has used her strong experience, active research, and continuous data gathering to help her empower women everywhere. Barbara found that women are consistently overlooked by financial organizations, causing this powerful demographic to be underserved and underplanned for in regards to their financial future, and she wanted to change that. She looks to help women become financially fearless by learning what they need to know to make the right financial decisions for themselves and their families. Using her proprietary Purse Strings model, Purse Strings provides a cadre of financial professionals who have been vetted to provide the unique service women want and empowers women everywhere to work towards their financial future. I am proud to say I am Purse Strings approved and can't wait to share our conversation. Well, hello, right, Larry Sprung here, and I am very pleased to have Dr. Barbara Provost, the founder of Purse Strings, with us today. Thanks for joining us, Barbara. You're welcome. Thanks for having me, Larry. Yeah, it's exciting to have you here and to tell the audience a little bit more about Purse Strings and what they're all about and what you're all about. But before we dive in, can you tell us about your path to starting Purse Strings? Sure. So. I was working in the financial industry for about 20, 25 years, but my background is I don't sell any products or services. I'm actually an adult educator. So as you know, I have a doctorate in adult and higher learning and a master's in business. And my passion is around creating really great education to help people be both confident and competent in the work that they do. So while developing education in the financial industry, I could see where they were overlooking a female market. I observed it by processes they were using to sell products, looking at some of the marketing materials that they were distributing out, and just seeing that typically the people selling it were men. And I was curious about it and would ask a lot of questions and question why weren't they being more focused on a female market? And of course, this was about 20 years ago, and that wasn't very popular at the time. So it was always kind of curious to me. And then when I started my own business, Provo Consulting, I worked with lots of different financial institutions and insurance companies and saw the same thing wherever I went. So friends of mine kind of said to me, you have something here, you need to really look into it. But then about eight years ago, I went through a divorce. And at the same time, I was navigating that process with other women. The conversations were around women saying, I wasn't sure about the the cash flow in my household. I don't know if I have life insurance or need life insurance. I don't normally pay the bills. And what I was hearing was a lot of women in my age group that really did not have a handle on the monies in their own household. So I thought, hmm, that's interesting. These women are not really prepared for their financial future, and they weren't sure if they could get divorced. So I'm a very curious person, and I hired a researcher, and I said, look, look into this issue. Look into see how is the insurance and financial industry serving women, and how are women set for their financial future? And all the data came back that the insurance and financial industry, and this is a quote from a Harvard Business Review, they win the award as being the least sympathetic to women. And women are very underserved and not prepared for their financial future. So boom, there you have it. Right. 
I thought, you know what? I What I observed and what I'm hearing, what I'm seeing, there's an issue here. And as an educator, it was something I thought I could zero in on. Yeah. I mean, listen, that's something that we try to tackle in our firm all the time. And we find that there are certainly women that are very involved and very interested in maintaining an interest in their financial future and having an active involvement. Then there are others that are kind of half in or half out sometimes we notice. And I don't know that if because the husband takes the lead in those cases or they don't. And in other cases, the woman not interested at all. And Mm -hmm. we try to make a concerted effort in the cases where they're not actively involved to really try to get them involved for these Mm -hmm. exact reasons. Mm -hmm. So it seems like you identified a problem. You have a solution, which I guess is what Purse Strings is all about. So can you tell us about Purse Strings and how it solved that issue that you saw in the marketplace? Sure. So I also did a lot of focus groups because I wanted to hear from women and hear what their struggles were. And I found that money is a very difficult topic for women to discuss and think about it. Oftentimes, when we were raised in our own households, many times money was off limits, the whole topic. You didn't ask people how much money they made or how much things cost or what they paid for their house. You just didn't. It was impolite. So we didn't really learn to have those conversations. And other times, like I heard someone say, oh, whenever I was growing up, all my parents did was argue about money. So money equals arguing, right? Right. So whew, I don't want to go down that route. You know, that means that we're going to have an argument. So money is such a taboo topic. And I realized that women needed to start coming to the table and being more comfortable having Having that conversation. But so many women said, when I talk with a financial advisor, they tell me things like, don't worry about that when I have a question. And I feel very dismissed by them. And the data supported that. If I was told that, I'd feel dismissed too. Yeah. Or they'd say, if I go with my husband, they just speak to my husband. So these are the issues that women were facing. First of all, it wasn't polite. They weren't being spoken to. Their questions were not being answered. And many said, we didn't learn about money in high school or college. They didn't teach us anything about money. And so I think that's a problem across the board. I don't think that's a female problem. I don't think they're teaching men about money either in in, in those institutions either. Totally agree. And the other thing I heard was a lot of times when I have these conversations, they use words that I don't understand and I'm afraid to tell them I don't understand what they're talking about. So it's just not a good, comfortable experience. So I thought, well, as an educator, I know how to educate adults and make it a warm and welcoming experience. Start where people are at. We created online tools and resources that are free for women at purstrings.co. And we start with the fundamentals. How do you budget? And what do I need to know about? buying my first home or I'm buying a car and I need auto insurance, how do I know what to select? Mm -hmm. So what we do is we arm them with information, knowledge, and skill that they can use to go have these conversations and feel more confident when they're in these conversations with their financial providers. So that's part of what we do as well as provide them experts to answer some questions that are typical questions that people have. We already put those out there on our website. So that's how we serve a female market. But moreover, insurance and financial professionals were my audience for 20 plus years. Right. And so I built education that teaches that audience how to reach out and engage with the female market. So reach them, engage with them, and really work to earn their hard-earned dollar. And we really drive home the power of the female market, which is so powerful, $23 trillion market, underserved market. And how women make financial decisions, which is different from the way men make their decisions. And where are these women and how can I gain their trust? Because trust, as you might know, is a very big factor. Right. I completely agree with you. And I think that moving in this direction is fantastic. Like you said, it's a $23 trillion market. And I would argue it's probably growing as we see assets transition from the boomer generation to the next. Yeah. A good portion of that money is going to the female audience. And yes, they need to be engaged. They need to understand because they're going to be in a position to have to make some financial decisions and they're going to want to be armed with that information in order to make the best decision possible now for their situation. And it sounds like Purse Strings is really one of those organizations that can help them get there. Can you tell us a little bit about the Purse Strings model? 
Sure. So at Purse Strings, we provide free, like I said, free online training and resources right on our site. And what we've started now is a Facebook group, which is Purse Strings for Financially Fearless Women. And we present what we call our Purse Strings Approved Providers, and they provide weekly tips and topics. So we had a topic on long-term care. So that's very, very important for women, but it sounds so big and expensive and complicated, and it's really not. So we have experts come in and talk about what is long-term care and why do I need it? And what if I don't have it? We had someone talk about social security. So what are the things that I need to know around social security? When should I start thinking about drawing my social security? What if I draw it earlier versus later? And ask answering all those questions. Now, the experts that we have presenting are our purse strings approved providers. So those are the folks that professionals that come to us, they've been trained and vetted by us. And those are the professionals that we promote as purse strings approved. Those are the professionals that are top of their game. They know the female market. They know how important it is to serve that market. And they are really reaching out to women and serving them the way they want to be served and not just trying to transactionally sell them a product. So we always say to women, you should work with purse strings approved professionals. Right. So if I understand and can kind of sum up what it's all about, you're really creating this community, this way for women to interact, I guess, with themselves as a group, as well as with advisors who have the knowledge and the ability to help guide these people and really create a community where there's free flowing information that speaks to them, what they're looking and how they're looking to be, I guess, spoken with and and provided with advice to create this platform for everybody to share that information and make better decisions ultimately. Exactly. And we consider it more of a trusted resource. And you'll see this on Facebook, you know, I need uh, insurance, I need this, I need that, where do I go? And they ask their female friends. And you with a woman, if she has really good service, even unprompted, she might say, Oh, my gosh, you're not going to believe I had the best experience today when I needed to buy a car needed insurance, I went to whatever, and they'll talk about it. And other women will jump in like, Oh, I need that, right? So right. Women will give 27 more referrals over their lifetime. So they're a great customer to have. And trust is a big factor. So with purse strings, we feel like we're building that trust bridge between what women want and need and the providers that can help them. And we're all things financial. So realtors, attorneys, financial providers, insurance, things like that. Right. So can you tell our audience, especially for the men that are listening, with through your research and everything that you looked at through the focus groups, et cetera, what are a couple of the overriding differences between the way women want to be communicated with from their advisor versus the men in the group? Sure. So it is kind of like women are from Venus, men are from Mars. It is kind <laughs> of like that. So women, first of all, will make financial decisions a lot based on who's most important to them, their family. So I tell this story about this man and woman who are going to see a life insurance salesperson. And in the car, she's thinking about in her mind, oh, this is a big day. You know, we're going to go get some life insurance and it's so important. And we really have to think about what happens if we're not here and what will happen to my children and who will care for them and remembering a friend who didn't have life insurance. And she's thinking all about this on her way to the appointment. Right. And she gets out of the car and she says to her husband, this is important. What do you think? And he goes, I think I should have parked under the tree if we're going to be here a long time because that's a shadier spot, right? right? So he's not thinking about all the emotions around buying this life insurance and all of the family and the coverages. He's thinking about parking the car and how much is it going to cost me? Now, that's kind of a broad brush, right. but it just shows how women purchase financial products a lot around emotion and how it's going to impact them and their family. That's interesting. So is there a way ultimately with that example, and I know it may be an extreme example mm -hmm. to prove a point, but I'm sure there are couples that have gone through that exact same scenario almost to a T. Is there a way for advisors to ultimately work with a husband and wife at the same time and cater to both of those scenarios? It seems like they're so far apart that is there a way or is it better off to kind of work with the husband in one regard and the wife kind of separately and then bring them together? What's the best method in your view? 
Well, I always think that they should both be at the table and hear the conversation together. And I also think it's important for an advisor to first find out where's the couple at, right? So you want to start where they're at about what are your thoughts about money, kind of see what their knowledge level is and, and so on and so forth. Now, for women that some advisors might think are hesitant to be in the conversation, it's important to note that when you're at the table, many of those conversations and the decisions made there are going to impact her future versus his. And you know why, right? Because she's going to outlive him. Right. (laughs) She's going to outlive him. And I will tell you, part of my frustration as I was observing the market was the women that were of retirement age and cobbling together jobs because they didn't have enough money to pay their bills and they were aging alone. So why is that happening? Well, I thought now is the time that women need to come to the table and understand the impacts of decisions made today that will impact their future aging alone. And that's why it's so important now to have that conversation with the couple. So while she might say, well, he makes the money decisions or I don't want to make the decision, it's important to have that conversation that really these decisions are really about you. Right. I agree with you a thousand percent. We sometimes in meetings with clients, we get kind of like a surprise look at times because we have this exercise that we like to go through called what's important to you. Mm -hmm. And we'll go through it with both of them. And a lot of times if they're both not fully engaged, I'll literally take a form and give it to each of them and ask them to fill it out individually. Mm -hmm. And 99 out of 100 times, the top three things that are important are vastly different between the husband and the wife. And we'll even go so far as we were just having a conversation the other day. We were talking about risk with a husband and wife. And the husband was saying, oh, we're moderate. And I was playing off and looking at the wife and she was not looking like they were moderate. And I said, where do you feel? And we started having a conversation. And because ultimately we have to really find out where they meet in the middle, not Mm -hmm. where the husband is, not where the wife is. Ultimately, we're planning for both of them. So we really have to either one of them has to say, yes, I agree. And ultimately really mean it and not just say it to say it. Or we have to find a happy medium because we want to and have to plan for both of them. And I think you're right. I think this is where, unfortunately, there are a lot of advisors that don't go that extra step to do that. And those are the ones that when the husband does pass, the wife is going to be seeking out a new advisor in a lot of cases. And it's important for them to have that feeling that there's an open line of communication that they can call in and ask a question. And it's not just, I'm only going to answer the calls from the husband. And, you know, I think that this purse strings concept and the community is excellent. Yes, exactly. And, you know, the stat is 70% of women will leave financial advisor if something happens to their husband. So it's unfortunate that the advisor will lose that client Mm -hmm. because they have not spent the time to build the relationship. But in something that you were saying, it's disheartening to think that at that point when they come to you, they have never talked about money or had some kind of common focus on where they want to put their money or spend their money. And just yesterday, we had a Facebook Live on the five must-dos to do before you say, I do. And one of them was, is really understand what someone's idea is about money. Are you a spender? Are you a saver? Mm -hmm. And, you know, like in our house, I said to my husband, you're like, what? And I'm newly remarried. And so I said, so, you know, what's like an amount that you'd be comfortable with that I could spend without asking you or just running it by you? And he really probably could care less. But we kind of joke about that because I saw someone make a $20,000 purchasing decision on his own with his wife sitting right next to him. And he never even asked her a question about it. And I was curious about that. And I just think you need to have those discussions and understanding of how you're going to manage your money together. I agree. I agree. So I already know the answer to this question, but I want to ask it so our listeners know and understand, can a male be a purse strings approved professional? Of course, (laughs) of course they can. And, you know, sometimes women will say, well, do women only want to work with women? And I would say no. I mean, the stats will tell you that women want to work with professionals who are going to serve them the way they want to be served. It doesn't matter if they're a man or a woman, unless you're really specifically only going to work with a female dentist, doctor, whatever, that's fine too. But in terms of finances or anything financial, it doesn't matter if it's a man or woman. It's really about how you engage 
and respect your customer. Yeah, we like to say we want to make sure there's a fit. So we, you know, our first meeting is, is there a fit? And that to us is the most important. And in many cases for the client, it should be the most important. You want to make sure that whoever you're entrusting with this advice and guidance is somebody that you feel that there's a good fit with and you're going to be able to work with them for a very long time to come. Yes. And so on that note, we say, don't just go to the referral from your brother-in-law or whatever, you know, interview a couple of different financial advisors and see which one you feel like there's a fit with because the experience is going to be different with each one of them. And so it's important to really interview somebody that you are going to be investing a lot of time and money and really handing over your nest egg to. So you want to make sure that you are working with someone that is aligned with what your goals are. Yeah. We've hit on a few of these, but what do you think the top three areas are that men are failing with when working with female clients, male advisors? Well, the very first one is just really asking questions and listening. And it sounds so simple, but what happens is oftentimes women are busy. They've come to the table. It's typically probably not as comfortable as they would like it to be. And I say the question to ask is, what are your concerns or how can I help you today? And then you just zip it and you don't say another word and you just let her talk about what it is she's concerned about. And what's interesting about that is, you know, she's going to share with you maybe something about her family, something about where she is right now, whether she's lost a job, found a job, is moving, wants to buy a car, child's going to college, whatever it is, all of that information is being shared with you. Now, I've had advisors say to me, I don't like working with women. They talk too much and they ask too many questions. And maybe that's true, but there's a reason for that. And she's giving you good information and she wants to learn and know. So that's a really great customer or client. But oftentimes what happens is advisors will go in and start their whole soliloquy of, who they are, what they do, how long have they been in business, all their certifications and blah, blah, blah. And women, if they've made an appointment with you, they probably already know that. Right. I think most people know that at this point. Yeah. Most people, before they walk through our doors, they've done a Google search, LinkedIn, Facebook, all the various social medias, and even just a regular Google search. I mean, yes, that's stuff that's, I think, table stakes at this point when they come through the doors at that point. Right. So it should be about her. Right. right. And so that's a good refocus. What are a couple other avenues, the way they communicate? What are a couple other major differences? It's assessing where they're at in their knowledge level just by having conversations and not using a lot of your own vernacular in your daily speak. So it's it's stuff you speak all the time with your own colleagues that the normal person is not familiar with. And oftentimes adults don't want to say, I don't know what you're talking about because they don't want to sound stupid or not savvy. So it's about really being clear in your terminology. And I'm not saying dumb it down. I'm just saying be in tune to the discussion and not ask, do you know what this means? Do you know what annuity is? Because you know, annuity is a big word. I mean, right. when you really break it down. So you might say, well, let me explain to you a little bit about annuity, what the good and the bad is about an annuity or something like that right. without making assumptions. Yeah. I think a lot of your tips and a lot of the differences, I think to some degree are things that will benefit both in conversation with women and with men too. We try very hard to break things down to very simplified concepts. And I've had people, clients and non-clients tell me, thank you for explaining this in that fashion because I never understood what that meant. We recently saw in the markets in 2021 what was going on with the whole short selling issue over the last couple of weeks. And we got calls from clients asking about it. They had no clue what was going on. And I said to them, listen, do you want just the Reader's Digest? I'm dating myself, but the Reader's Digest version of what really is happening here. And I explained it to them in like a minute and a half. They're like, really, that's all it's about? But they hear these big words on CNBC and they're not Mm -hmm. sure. So breaking that stuff down to bite-sized pieces. And again, you don't want to make a client feel intimidated to ask questions. We want them to ask questions. So we will typically, or I'll typically say something along the lines, I'm going to do my best to break this down as digestible as possible. If at any point 
it's still not at a level that you feel comfortable, ask, Mm because we can even break it down further. So I think those are great tips for everybody, Mm -hmm. not necessarily just women. You talk a lot about women being financially fearless, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you? What does it mean to be financially fearless? That means a woman who's not afraid to learn and seeks out some resources and takes an interest in the money that she earns or is incoming into the family household and doesn't give all of that information or that power over to somebody else, but is invested in the conversation, understands how to make the best investments for herself or her family, seeks out working with the right professionals, isn't afraid to ask questions, and really has set some goals for herself in being in charge and empowered with the money that she's working with. And I always say money is power and you really vote with your money anytime you spend it or invest it. And to be very conscious about that and being very active in those decisions. I think that's great. I think everybody, male, female, financially fearless is the way to go. And I think Purse Strings is a great platform to help people. I really wish, like we discussed earlier, I wish this stuff was really ingrained in our educational system Mm -hmm. because I think that would help everybody to be a little bit more financially fearless, but I love it. So thank you for sharing that. What do you see as the next steps for Purse Strings? What's the next level that you're looking to bring the organization to? Well, what I would love to do is as an entrepreneur, and you're always shouting from your front door, it's very difficult to get out your messaging. And this message is so important. My dream is to really partner with an organization like Target, where we could go in and work with, you know, they're probably 95% female consumers and partner with them and help them spread the word throughout their organization and to their consumer base so that it really is more rampant across the country and getting all women financially fearless. And we talk about even if you have a paycheck, the power of your paycheck and how you can really leverage your paycheck to help finance and invest And everything from budgeting to how do I get my kids through college to everything that you can imagine that women need, especially single women, and especially during this time of COVID where women have been hit really, really, really hard, but really raising women up and empowering them and working with organizations like that, that can really help us help women and lift them up. Yeah. So you really want to try to bring this as easily as possible to a larger scale you got in it. a smart way and go where, I guess what you're saying is go where the women are exactly. and try to use that as a delivery tool to help empower them in a larger format and a, and a larger grouping. You got it. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. Is there a specific mindset? This is the Midland Money Mindset. So is there a specific mindset that women should really have in order to be financially fearless? Is there something that in regards to that? The mindset is for us, what we're always struggling with with women is it's not a scary subject and it's not difficult and it's not hard. And I think women fear money and they fear the money conversation. Not all women, of course, but many women who've never been really taught or discussed money. So the mindset is, is you got this for the most part, and we're here to help. And we have professionals like you, Larry, who's one of our Purse Strings Approved professionals who are there to help them on their journey and help them make the best decisions for themselves and their family so they can have a financially fearless lifestyle and a great life and a great retirement. Okay. So they really just have to have an open mindset, really, to learning this and and ingratiating themselves to learn more and become more financially fearless, right? Yeah. Yeah. We want them to be brave. There you go. Barbara, it's been a pleasure having you. We end each show by asking each of our guests the same question, and that is, what did you do today that brought you joy and put you in the right mindset for success? Oh, I love that question. (laughs) Thank you. I love the answers, by the way. I get a lot of great answers. Yeah. I have set up my office in a way that's feng shui So there's very good she here. There's a lot of things in here that make it a very calming and very creative environment and helps me really focus on my goals. It helps me to really fulfill my mission, which is engaging with women 
and giving them the tools and resources and also partnering them with the likes of professionals like yourself so that they can live a great life. That is awesome. We have a feng shui expert in our office as well that gives us a lot of great advice uh, regarding yeah. that. So definitely, it sounds like you get a lot of energy from that and from the people that you're serving, which is right. always awesome. Yeah. It's been a pleasure having you, Barbara. I appreciate your time. I thank you for it. And if people want to find you online, which we'll have in the show notes, how's the best way they could find Purse Strings? Well, our site is PurseStrings.co. And on Facebook, we love uh, women to join our Facebook group, which is Purse Strings for Financially Fearless Women. And then we're on all the platforms. We're on Twitter and Pinterest and Instagram. So you can find us at PurseStringsCO on all of those platforms. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Barbara. It was great speaking with you and make it a great day. Thank you so much, Larry. You too. I want to thank Dr. Barbara Provost for being a guest on the Midland Money Mindset Show. Barbara is on a mission to help women everywhere get the advice and guidance they need and, quite frankly, deserve. Through her vast experiences while working as an educator and advisor to the World Bank, she realized women needed more and purse strings is striving to fill that gap. She's a true inspiration to women everywhere, and I know it came through in our conversation. Barbara can be found across all social media platforms, and all the contact information needed to find her can be found in the show notes. Thank you for joining us this week on the Mitlin Money Mindset. Make sure you visit our website at mitlinfinancial.com and be sure to smash the subscribe button so you don't miss a show. We encourage you to help others find our valuable content. And listen, please don't keep us a secret. You can also schedule an Is There a Fit call right from our website or by using the link that you'll find in the description section of your podcast player or app. Be sure to join us for our next episode to learn more about the mindset needed to successfully plan for and live your best life before and through retirement. The opinions voiced in the Midland Money Mindset Show with Lawrence Sprung are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All indices are unmanaged and may not be invested into directly. Investing involves risk, including possible loss of principal. No strategy ensures success or protects against loss. To determine what may be appropriate for you, consult with your attorney, accountant, financial or tax advisor prior to investing. Investment advisory services offered through CWM LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Guests on the Midland Money Mindset Show are not affiliated with CWM LLC.